So, uh, it's a top, obviously, that Sally here, you can see her work downstairs. Um, I think uh, I think it's maybe about 30 years I've known Sally from being in the studio here. Uh, I was thinking about things I could say, but really it's just, uh, I've always thought she's kind of brilliant, so that's about it really. I'll hand, <laughs> hand her over and uh, she can explain her life's work, I guess. So, Sally. John, thank you very much. Um, I think there are to start with um, just a few people on the staff before we get going. One is um, Sue J. Taylor, Sheila Kennard, who suggested that I did this um, retrospective exhibition. Um, so this is, and I must thank the printmakers for all their help. This is very, very early years. I was the daughter of a sailor, so we moved around a lot, and this is some of your notes, Lock you. Uh, there was a naval base at Mellon Charles, and this is where I grew up. And I started my love of sheep because I had a pet lamb called Daisy Death. Um, so this is uh, my childhood. My mother painted, which is where I perhaps started, because there were all these sort of paints in the house. Um, so. Um, and how old were you then? I was about eight there. I was still rationing before the coronation. So. It's quite <laughs> sweet for Russian. Uh, this is uh, obviously a more modern drawing, but this just shows you the old poster. This is all at all, at all Bay, uh, and we have a school called Alderig School, which we walk to. We walk two miles to school. So this is the main street of all Bay, so I don't know it. Did you do miles in school? Uh, we had a we were given tiny little bits of paper to draw on, um, and we had a wonderful teacher called Dawn McLeod who helped Marie Sawyer in the U. Now we've suddenly belted forward. Um, this is a dark school. Um, this is a lithograph on stone, which was amazingly hard work because you had to clean your stone when you'd done your printing. This was a black and white lithograph which was hand painted and it was inspired by a student trip to London and the Victoria and Albert Museum. And it's a sort of self-portrait with one of the wonderful b &A hats, which was mirrored again. So it's a reflection of the hat over the That is correct. And, and what, that was about 1960? Well, 61, I think. And I'm wearing a handmade Liberty scarf, which was very much the thing at the time. And the handmade earring. So that was that was us and we thought we were the bees in this year. We were the bees. And that year, 1961, was a bit of a change. It was. This is um, another lithograph. This was from the uh, Live Studios of Edinburgh College of Art, um, looking up at the castle and what is now Victoria Street. Well, the, the grass market below. Uh, and Edinburgh was really very dark and quite dingy in those days. Um, and no women in the pubs, it was quite a... And then it was two very split uh, society. This was in my flat. Um, I had a pet fish. And that's it. We had uh, a wonderful tutor called Harry Moore who worked on Vogue and he was a wonderful illustrator. We, we were really taught to draw. We did a lot of life drawing, great life. Um, they really pushed drawing at us. Um, this is very much of the time, really. Um, quite detailed illustrations we did then. We were very influenced by um, well, really, uh, David Hockney um, and Peter Blake, um, and then some of the older illustrators, Audrey Gladesley, and my great fan was Eric Revillius, who was one of the black and white prints. And at this stage, I was in my, after two years of general, I specialised in printmaking and illustration. 
this was my final degree show when I was doing paper toys. Um, and this was a sort of paper doll size. There you are, looking as though it was taken yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> by this time, this was about 66, it was getting very, the illustration was getting rather tight and detailed. Now this was, I finished an art school here and I actually got married quite quickly and had family and at that time I was doing wood engraving. Now this was where we lived in Wick and this is the boy Peter, uh, a very famous fishing boat that always got the best catches. Nobody quite knew why, but it was coming into harbour in Wick. This is a very typical Caithness uh, view, big skies, Probably big sky, lots of clouds. Um, lots of light. Mm -hmm. Lots of light. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we printed the I printed these probably very much by hand, so uh, they were with a spoon. With a spoon. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And in those days you could buy wood blocks from um, T. E. Lawrence who had a wonderful shop in Bleeding Heart Lane in London. Um, my husband then started up a pottery in Leicester and I was doing decoration, decorating for that. This was some of, the, some of our publicity. And these are transfers we did for, we did a range of children's mugs. And this was a transfer. Uh, this was, uh, jumping forward, this was some um, uh, everybody gone away, slightly more prosperous, and I managed, we managed to go to Australia, which was very exciting to see my aunt. I had a wonderful tour around Australia, well, a tiny bit of Australia, because it's so enormous. Um, these were some of the sort of sketches that I did. Um, I was absolutely thrilled with Australia. So. This is very much nearer home. Uh, I, because I have sheep, I <coughs> love Shetland. And I've had some wonderful trips to Shetland. Uh, this was a, Sh a Shetland sheep farm visit, and it's a very rough sketch, but downstairs uh, you will see a liner cut of this, and it's called Clouster Bank. Some of you will know it very well. Um, so this, this is really drawing for printing. This is getting ready to think about uh, doing the print. So these are very free drawings in your sketch. Well, you're generally standing up and you're in the gear. Yeah. So this is Cusa <laughs> Fun. This was the uh, this was the print, yes. and um, very much a typical Shetland croft with huge bales and the Shetland cattle on the hill, um, and the sheep had all been beautifully divided up for us to come and see them. And this was a wonderful man with his two dogs called John Abernethy, who was a great breeder of Shetland sheep. Uh, this is another Shetland, this is on Walsa. Um, and the, the contrast between the old fishing boats and these huge modern boats, uh, which I think were all tight, but, um, they're only allowed to have limited days when they can fish for the fish quota. Um, so you see these huge boats sitting idle. This is the old trading station, I think, when they had the Hanseatic League and they did a lot of trading with salt fish with, the, with, the, with Europe. So, uh, this is, sorry, this is another Shetland one, a typical Shetland um, croft. And typical of your sketches, <laughs> very lively. Uh, they were very interesting, they were dry, growing black oats, which have, have a very, very long stalk. Um, and they use them for me. The, the man who ran the clock was a great specialist in making Shetland baskets, kishis, uh, and he used his oats for making baskets. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a little print, actually, I think I did this here of the rock, of the mm -hmm. with the stoops on the, on the left hand side. Is that the one I know, that one? No, that's actually, what do you call it, John, when it's layers of paper, cardboard? <laughs> Oh, Colourgraph. Colourgraph, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful, mm. This is yet another Shetland sketch. Um, the stones washed up on the beach. And this is uh, 
slightly different. This is on the South Seas, huge expanse of beach, and I think rather a grey day, but the wonderful, um, wonderful colours. This is, this is a drawing I did. I was going to do a print. I didn't actually use it for print, but I just was so inspired by the colours of the seaweed and this great feeling of space here, and the lovely blue plastic. Container that we chucked up by the sea. Now, this was a, a, a craft near us in Dornock, um, typical craft with lots of everything still left from years back, um, wonderful feeling of trough all over the place. And there's an etching of this um, downstairs, which you see for Willie the Bees. He's a marvellous craft, he was a postman and a piper. And a poacher. And a poacher. <laughs> <laughs> this was a project we did, did about this area for History Links Museum of Dornock. And we did lots of different uh, things with young people, which was very exciting. <coughs> this is completely, uh, this is miles away in the Baltic. This is Gotland. Um, a wonderful island, fantastically wild, and full of amazing young uh, wildflowers um, and then there's a wonderful plant called um, Cranby Maritima which is growing on the beach which I did, a, I used it for a pine cup. This is uh, a drawing of the plant, I didn't dare pick it because I thought it was terribly endangered but uh, that's a lovely thing to do around the country. This is a wonderful trip we had to Jordan. Um, and what is so amazing, if you draw things, everybody comes and talks to it, which is really, really nice. So you engage with, with people um, who um, and sometimes you can get them to draw in your sketchbook, which is even best. More people who you don't seem to mind. I love it. I love it when mm. people come. Now, this is a wonderful project, um, thanks to John, that we did um, here involving. Um, People from the Brora Learning Centre, and we were asked to pr produce banners for the Dornock uh, 400 years. And we had a lovely time because we took natural history, history, um, and people from the Dornock area and got some lovely, lovely drawings. And then we came and did other screen printing. Now this was another project I did uh, through History Links Museum. We did um, a trail around Dornock, history trail around Dornock. Um, uh, this was well, well, people who'd been cared for over um, given a little bit of ground to build a house on and they'd been cleared from their crops. Um, and in those days it was all turf roofs and there were certain places in Dornock where they could, where they could uh, take the turf from. But this was another project I did with natural history project. Um, the plants and uh, birds uh, around the beach, which are really very unique. Um, they are in the world. Scottish. This was a wonderful book <laughs> that I was allowed, um, a marvellous author from Cape Nurse called Jim Miller. Um, and he wrote a sort of slightly arches type uh, piece in the, in the Dog Road Journal. And this was all in Casey's dialect. It's a wonderful book called Brimster Tales. And this was depicting the councillors on an exchange visit. <laughs> 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 uh, this is just a sort of commercial drawing of Dornock, I think I did for a Christmas bird or something. Uh, this is a, a rather awful painting, but um, Victoria Crow did a wonderful um, collection of paintings. She lived in the borders, she lived next door to an old lady who had sheep called Jenny Armstrong. Um, and rather sadly, she painted her regularly, and Ginny Armstrong got over and over, and the sheep got over and over, and the fences got over and over, and it's all slightly sad. And eventually, she painted Ginny Armstrong in the care home. Um, but the 
Um, Duffford Studio did a wonderful weaving of one of these paintings, um, which is in the Chen Street Museum. This is just me at Esh Ness in Shetland, and it's wearing an absolute coolie. And there are very, very um, steep cliffs below me. So I was sort of slightly hanging on the grim light and trying to draw. Um, Okay. I, think I think that's actually the last one. I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.